Did you grow up hearing family members tell you things like, oh, you're too sensitive, or stop being so dramatic, or you're always overreacting to things, or I was just kidding. You're not alone. This happens often when you're in the family scapegoat role, and that's what I'll be talking about today in this episode of Beyond Family Scapegoating Abuse. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my channel. I'm Rebecca Mandeville, psychotherapist and author of Rejected, Shamed, and Blamed, Help and Hope for Adults in the Family Scapegoat Role. If you didn't relate to any of the phrases that I shared at the beginning of this video, you'll probably want to skip it. But that doesn't mean you're not in the family scapegoat role. It just means that you might not be seen in the family as someone who's feeling uh, too much, uh, who's uh, aware of other people's emotions. This can happen, however, if you are an empath type or a highly sensitive person, someone who has, I, I call it spidey senses, someone who can pick up intuitively on other people's emotions or on family dynamics that other people don't seem to be experiencing. And if you relate to that, you'll probably get something out of this video. So I hope you, you'll stick around. And by the way, if you do like this video and got something out of it, take a minute to hit the thumbs up button. That tells YouTube that it's a video we're seeing and they'll put it on other people's home feeds. And there are people suffering from family scapegoating abuse that need to hear this message. And I also hope you take a minute to subscribe and check out our community post on the homepage for other pieces of information that I share with our subscribers to help them in their recovery from family scapegoating abuse and so they can understand better what happened to them and their family. In my book on what I named Family Scapegoating Abuse, or FSA, there's a chapter on being the family empath and how this can contribute to your being the target of family scapegoating behaviors and family scapegoating abuse. The family empath is often the truth teller in the family the person in the family who's picking up on more subtle realities, the person in the family who might experience um, a, a, a more amplified sense of justice or injustice, and that person may even step up to help other family members or siblings to defend them or to bring justice to that family member in a situation where they feel uh, that family members being wronged or treated unfairly. So although they may be a sensitive person, this does not mean they're a weak person or a person lacking courage. As I've mentioned in earlier videos, we know that dysfunctional family systems can be complicated by unrecognized intergenerational trauma, multi-generational trauma. And this is actually affecting the family in a myriad of ways that no one's aware of. And it is important that if you feel you are scapegoated in your family, that you understand your family may have generations of trauma that's not been recognized or addressed. And that's actually helping to fuel the family projective identification process, which I have already a couple of videos about. So check out other videos on my channel where I discuss this and I post some articles on the family projective identification process. It's just so critical that you understand that many of the forces that are promoting your scapegoating are unconscious. That doesn't mean it's not something you need to protect yourself from. It doesn't mean people should not be held accountable but it can give us more insight, awareness, and understanding of what's actually happening in our family. 
this is not always the case, as I've mentioned before, when the family is headed up by a very strong narcissist, especially a malignant narcissist, that's a separate, sometimes related issue to the family projective identification process. And intergenerational trauma may or not be a contributing factor, but there, the abuse in that case is conscious and intentional and should be treated as such, regardless of how much the narcissist may deny it. But this video is focusing on the family empath in either type of family system, dysfunctional or narcissistic, because the impact on you is going to be the same. In family systems that are being negatively impacted by unaddressed intergenerational trauma, will not only have family roles, one of those being the scapegoat child, will also have people in the family who are allowed to have certain emotions and express them, and people in the family who are not allowed to have those emotions, nor is it okay for them to express them. Uh, some of you might relate to growing up in a family where the father was allowed to be very angry, have angry outbursts, uh, be exhibiting even rage at times, and no one would say boo about that. But if the mother or uh, someone, a child in the family showed anger, that might be pathologized, that might be labeled as bad, or wrong. And then there'll be a person in the family who might be able to be the one who can exhibit grief, if not openly, they might be doing it through wearing black clothing all the time. They might have suicidal ideation or even suicide attempts, and they'll be completely unaware that they're actually carrying the grief for the family and in a way that death drive for the dysfunctional family that needs help and doesn't know it. And then we have the person in the family who's the sensitive child, or it could be a parent, uh, but in this case, I'm going to focus on the child and the scapegoated child specifically. This child is the feeler for the family. The problem is the family doesn't want to feel the feelings that the feeler in the family's feeling. <laughs> they are very threatened by genuine, authentic feeling expression and threatened by what the child in the family who may be the more sensitive, perceptive child is reflecting back to the family through being the feeler or the carrier of those more sensitive emotions for that dysfunctional family system. The emotions that make one vulnerable. So if you're in the role of family empath or that sensitive child or what Alice Miller uh, called the gifted child, the child who's able to just pick up these more subtle realities and just by their very existence is reflecting those back to the family, that's enough to get you into the family scapegoat role because you're a threat. And if you're the truth teller in the family, you're a double threat. A truth telling, feeling highly sensitive child often will be a child as they grow older being drawn to psychology or the field of psychology. And many will end up as therapists. And I, um, you probably won't be surprised to learn that more than half my practice is uh, I'm treating and working with psychologists, doctors of psychology, licensed family therapists, clinical social workers. And I say that sometimes we therapists have a little uh, more extra weight. We have some more rocks in the backpack we need to, <laughs> we, we shouldn't be having to carry, but we're forced to carry until we begin to understand what's happened to us in our family of so how does a dominant family member shut the empath or sensitive child down 
when they show their sensitivity or th they exhibit that what has been said to them is hurtful or damaging or harmful, they'll be told they're too sensitive. And that will be pathologized. In other words, the child or adult child will be made to feel there's something wrong for them for actually appropriately picking up these subtle dynamics or the dysfunction happening in the family or the abuse or the harmful behaviors or hurtful behaviors that are being exhibited specifically toward them or maybe to a sibling or someone else in the family. If you show a strong emotion, maybe you cry over something, then you're shut down in, in, in regard to having that sensitivity by being told you're being dramatic or stop being dramatic. If something's said to you and it's like an ouch, like, ooh, that hurt, and you show that or say something about it, you might hear, I was just kidding. Don't be so sensitive. Has that ever happened to you? Imagine being a young child and repeatedly being told you're too sensitive or even that didn't happen. Now we're getting into gaslighting. That's a separate video. You didn't see that. Gaslighting does go along with this shutting down of the family empath or family truth teller because you're a threat just by being who you are. You're a threat to the dysfunctional family systems, power holders, usually that's the parent. So a child in this position is repeatedly having their sense of reality, their perceptions discounted and dismissed, minimized or diminished. Usually all four of those at once. And the, the tenacity of the empath child to hold on to their reality anyway is stunning. It's profound. I'm in awe of it. A lot of these children, they know what's going on and there's nothing you can tell them. They may on the outside act like, okay, I learned that's not going to fly in this family. I'm going to keep my mouth shut next time. But usually... They do not buy into this other distorted reality that's being presented by the family power holders or the, the narcissistic parent. And they may learn to hide that they aren't on the Kool-Aid, that they're not buying that reality, but they're not buying it. And energetically, that can radiate out on subtle levels. Again, I do identify as being a transpersonally oriented therapist. And the fact that you're not buying into that reality being presented to you, that distorted, twisted reality, on some level may be being picked up by the parent and that also will contribute to your being scapegoated, scapegoated sometimes from a very early age. And this is also a way to um, otherize a child, uh, make them feel there's something wrong with being who they are innately, who they are authentically. Uh, this is where toxic shame can start to develop, where uh, the child on an unconscious level believes there's something wrong with them or they're defective or bad. And the truth is the child's actually gifted and perceptive and beautifully sensitive. And that's a threat to the family. Not only is it not welcomed, you have to remember it's a threat. And whatever threatens the power holders of a system, that person may find themselves being rejected or even ejected from that family system. And this could be your family of origin. That is an overview of how it, it can be that you're told you're too sensitive. It's because you're a threat to the power holders in the family system. And my hope is for all of you who relate to this, you didn't buy into it, you held on to who you really are and you recognize your gifts and let your light shine because there's people in this world who need your gifts and will benefit from them.